All right. Uh, thank you all for coming today. Uh, we're continuing our series in Romans, and we're in chapter 14 today. So if you will, go ahead and turn to Romans chapter 14. Um, one thing I... Um, now, Romans 14, 13, 14, and 15, Paul is uh, instructing uh, the church in Rome about relationships. That's what chapter 13, and 14, and 15 are about. They're about relationships. Now, Paul has already discussed in the first few chapters of Rome about how we are all sinners and that uh, there is only one way for your sin to be paid for, and that's by what Christ has already done on the cross for us, okay? And that we can't pay for our sin ourselves. No matter how good we are, we can't pay for our sin ourselves. Then he goes on to explain justification and then sanctification. And then also that God keeps his promises even though the promises to the Jews have been set aside for a little while. Okay? That he's still going to keep his promises to them. And now he comes to 13, 14, and 15. And he's talking about how we should live as Christians. How we should treat each other. Okay? How we, uh, our relationship with the government. Last week they talked, he talked about in verse chapter 13 about our relationship with the government with other people, and with God. All right? And today, he's talking mainly about our relationship with other people. All right, mm -hmm. So he digs in a little bit deeper in this. But one thing that we need to understand is, and this is where a lot of people go wrong. They start reading these things, especially the first few chapters of Romans, where it talks about us all being sinners, and... And, uh, and then here in the last part of Romans where he, he starts talking about our behavior. And what people do is they like to lift out this part about behavior, all right, and talk about your behavior, you know, and, and you go home condemned because the pastor's been telling you how bad your behavior is compared to, uh, compared to what this word says, right? As compared to Jesus' behavior, your behavior is never going to compare. So you go home feeling condemned, don't you? But we have to remember what God says. In Romans 8, chapter, uh, in Romans chapter 8, verse 1, it says, Therefore there is now no condemnation to, to them which are in Christ Jesus. Okay? Amen. Now, when we talk about behavior back here in chapter 14, we have to remember what it says in chapter 8. Okay, we have to remember what it says uh, in chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of glory. So, as we're talking about behavior, don't forget, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ. Okay, the, this is a guy. Okay, um, I was talking to a guy this this week, and one of his something that he can't he just can't get he can't get a hold of that's that's really been bothering him the last few weeks is he can't figure out when he got saved. Huh? He can't figure out when he got saved. Something happened to him a while back. Okay. A, like 10 years ago, something happened to him. He got this, this rush of that he felt like the Holy Spirit was all over him, and he suddenly, he, he, had, he was an atheist, and suddenly he started believing in God, okay? Now, you know who I'm talking about, don't you? Suddenly he started believing in God, right? But he's been convinced by people who have been teaching him in the last couple of years that only if you believe certain things are you saved. So now he doesn't know when he was saved. He don't know if he was saved when he had that experience or he was saved the, when he was taught a certain thing. You know what I mean? It, but does it really matter? When he was saved? As long as he's saved. As long as he's saved, does it really matter when, which time it happened? So we, we have people who are, who are confused about who are confused about things like this and they spend so much time trying to figure this kind of stuff out that they're not working on their relationship with Christ and that's where we should all be focusing on is our relationship with Christ. 
And what does God, and what does uh, Paul say about that? He says in, let me see if I can find it here, in verse, in verse 12. Chapter. chapter 12, verse 2. Chapter 12, verse 2. It says, and, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Okay? We are to be renewed, or we are to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Okay? Not by taking chapter 14, which talks about our behavior, and doing every little thing that chapter 13, 14, and 15 tell us to do. Okay? We, our relationship with Christ comes through the transforming or the renewing of our mind. Amen. How is your mind renewed? By reading, studying, hearing the word taught, meditating on it. It's about the word. Okay? It's not about behavior. It's about the word. Okay? Now, with that said, let's talk about your behavior. Okay? <laughs> because we must talk. Paul talked about it here in chapter, for three chapters. So we need to talk about it too, don't we? All right? It says, now, uh, in verse 1 of chapter 14, it says, Him that is weak in faith, receive ye, but not to doubtful dispute, disputations. Okay, now, what we need to understand about this verse is, and like I said before, as we go down through this chapter and we start talking about these things, we must remember what Paul says first, okay? It's the same thing with every one, almost every one of these chapters. He makes a statement right at first, and in that statement, that statement we are to keep in mind the whole time that we're studying chapter 14, okay? That's the way it was written. Right? We have to keep this in mind. Him that is weak in the faith, receive ye but not to doubt for disputation. Now, the word that Paul uses here is, uh, the Greek word that Paul uses for receive ye, that doesn't just mean receive them into the church or, you know, just because y'all disagree a little bit on, on doctrine or something like that. Go ahead and receive them into the church and just show them love and, and that kind of stuff, you know what I mean? And don't get in arguments with them. But this word isn't just, this word doesn't just mean receiving into the church or receiving into the fold. <laughs> What this word really means is to embrace, to lift up, to edify, to draw close to yourself, not to the, not to the whole body, but to yourself, okay? This is like, you know, it's, we see an example of this. Every time you watch a commercial for the ASPCA or the Humane Society, Right, where they showed these little dogs and cats, you know what I mean, that have been horribly treated and everything. What do those people want you to do? They want you to, they want you to help pick those, pick them up and embrace them and take care of them, you know what I mean, and love them, all right? The same thing with like the Shriners Hospitals commercials. You know what I mean? They don't want you to just feel sorry for those kids. They want you to lift, up, lift them up Embrace them. Send money so that they can be helped. You know? This is the idea that he's trying to get across here. Okay? Not just, oh, come on in. We're all going to get along. No matter your doctrine, my doctrine, it doesn't matter. We're all just going to get along. That's not what he's talking about here. It means to lift these people up. To embrace them. Yeah. Hold them close to you. Yeah. But it also says, but not to doubtful disputations. Okay? It goes on to say, for one believeth that he may eat all things, another who is weak eaten, eateth herbs. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not. And not him, not him that eateth not judge him that eateth, for God hath received him. Okay? In other words, just because one person believes one thing, and another person believes another thing as far as when it comes, eating, eating was a big it's not such a big thing as it, today as it was back in these days, okay? Back in, uh, back in Paul's day, if a Christian, a lot of the, a lot of the uh, 
food, or especially meat, that was offered uh, on tables by the Gentiles at that time was meat that had already that had been offered to idols. Okay, it had been offered to idols, and then what was left over, they would take it home and they would feed it to themselves. And and if you were staying at their house, you know, they would offer to you the same meat that they were eating. You know what I mean? They didn't see anything wrong with it because to them, meat that was offered to idols was, it was just meat. You know what I mean? It was no big deal. That's what everybody ate. But to a Jewish person, they were never allowed to eat anything that had been offered to an idol. Okay? And Paul is telling us, listen, it's different now. You know what I mean? If this guy believes that he's not supposed to eat anything offered to idols, it's okay if he believes it. You know what I mean? It's okay if he doesn't eat it. Don't give him a hard time about it. You know what I mean? But he's also telling the Jewish people that, look, this has nothing to do with your salvation. You know what I mean? This has nothing to do with being a Christian. All right? Meat offered to idols is no big deal anymore. Things have changed. All right? We have to remember everything changed when Paul began his revelation. Now, when it, it talks about here in verse 1, but not to doubtful disputations. That's happened in this church so many times. People have, people have come here and they have doubted what we um, We had a guy, it was back at the last building that we had, that I was preaching on we are saved by grace through faith and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. There's nothing you can do to, to earn your salvation. There are no ordinances to fill. There is nothing that you have to do to be saved. And, uh, and I included baptism in that, right? Well, he stood up right in the middle of church with his Bible saying, read Mark. It says you must be baptized. You know? That's, a, that's what I would call a, a doubtful disputation. Right? <laughs> that's a doubtful disputation, you know? And what I didn't want to do is sit and argue with the guy. Now, before I could even get to him after church, uh, he got up and left. And I haven't talked to the guy since. <laughs> you know? But if he had just stayed, I could have sat and explained to him, you know what I mean, that baptism was something that they did under the law. That it doesn't have anything to do with your salvation today. I could have explained it to him and showed him in the Word. You know what I mean? But he wasn't even willing to hang around and talk about it. He just decided we didn't agree on that and that I was some kind of heretic and he needed to get himself and his family out of there. You know? Which I understand that. I understand that. Most people who hear me think I'm an idiot and they need to get away from me. I'm, I'm aware of that, okay? Um, but see, we shouldn't we shouldn't be doing disputes like this. Yeah. Right? That's what this whole chapter is about. Disputing again about things like this, like this. You know? Sit down and talk to each other about it. I know the first time um, I went to one of the conferences that we that we go to in Chattanooga. I went in that I went in that conference proudly. I went in that conference with my new King James Bible. Mm -hmm. I was proud of my new King James Bible because that new King James Bible had taught me everything I know. You know? Mm -hmm. I was, and, and I didn't care that everybody there thought I was crazy for having a new King James Bible. I was proud of that thing. Yeah. Now, I didn't go in there and say, and stand up when the preacher was talking and go, I got a new King James Bible, and there's nothing you can do to take it away from me, right? Because they were all reading the old King James, you know? And they believed in the old King James. They still do to this day. And now I do, right? But not because, not because I was afraid of what they would think of me or because of anything like that, but it was because they loved me enough 
Jerry loved me enough to introduce me to a man who could tell, show me in the scripture where I was, where my thinking was wrong. And then I listened to, and then I went to another conference up in Chattanooga also. And y'all, most of y'all have heard this message. Richard Jordan did a message on, on some of the numbers in the Bible and how the DNA and all that stuff works, right? Y'all remember that? We showed it up here on the screen. Y'all remember that? And at the end of his message, he said something that has stuck with me. And that was, you hear all these numbers I've been quoting to y'all and telling you all about? You don't find them anywhere but in the King James Bible, the original King James Bible. The one with all the yees and yays and these and thousands and all that stuff. You only find those numbers in that. So after that, and after studying it myself for a little while, I became convinced that that's the right way to go. But it's not like I came back to the church and said, okay, y'all, everybody's got switch. You know, as a matter of fact, we even, I even used the new King James. I continued to use the new King James uh, on Wednesdays for quite a while until I switched over. Mainly because we were doing Proverbs and I didn't understand a word he was saying in Proverbs <laughs> in, the new King, in the old King James. You know what I mean? But I am convinced now that the new King, that the old King James Bible, the original King James Bible, is the true and only the closest thing to the pure word of God that there is today. Amen. That's why I use it. And that's what I that's why I teach out of it. Alright? Not because those people in that conference beat me over the head and wouldn't let me in without one. You know? It's always been the way I feel and the way I think about teaching the word. Is I'm not here to beat you over the head with what you should do, how you should do it, which Bible you're you are to read. Uh all these kinds of things. It's always been my opinion, and some people don't stand on this opinion, and that's okay too, because they have their own way. It's been always been my way, though, to not argue with people about these kinds of things, about the old King James and new King James, about whether you should speak in tongues, whether you should not speak in tongues, whether you should do this or whether you should do that. All right? You know, that, that's not my... I, it's. I don't feel like it's my place to, to say you can do this and you can't do that. What I do is I teach you what the Word says to the best of my ability. The truth of the Word, the best I know. And then it's up to you to make up your own mind. You make up your own mind which Bible you want to use. I have my own opinion which one I use, which one I teach from. All right, But you make up your own mind based on what you know about the Word. Right? You come and hear me teach. I will teach you what the Word says. You make up your own mind about your behavior. Because there is therefore now no condemnation in those who are in Christ Jesus, right? Yeah. All right? So I'm not going to condemn you. It's not my place, is it? It's not my place to tell you. Y'all have all heard me say this before. It's not my place to tell you what you're doing wrong. That's your spouse's job. <laughs> Y'all heard this before. <laughs> my place, it's my place to teach you what the word says. What the word, it's just like with this uh, verse, with this chapter 14, verse 1. You need to know that to receive ye, the word that Paul is using is to embrace, to, to help to lift up. You know what I mean? Not just welcome into the fold. All right? Once you know that, then you can make a decision on what this, then you really know what the word's saying, right? And then you can make an intelligent and an educated decision on how to live your life. You understand what I'm saying? Let's, let's move on. Verse 4. Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? 
to his own master. He standeth or fall. Yea, he shall be holden up, for God is able to make him stand. Right? In other words, we are not to be judging each other. Okay? It's not our job to judge others or to tell each other how to live for, our, for that matter. It's not our job. Okay? Each person will be judged by their own master. Okay? My master is Jesus Christ, and he will judge. All, all men will stand before him and bow someday. You know what I mean? Now, we aren't going to be a part of the great white throne judgment, which is only for sinners. But we have our own judgment that we have to stand before God. Okay? So, don't worry about what when other people around here on this earth judge you for anything. Amen. Because you're going to be judged by the judge. Amen. Right? <laughs> judgment is given to him, not to anybody else. It's just like the word says, revenge is mine, saith the Lord. So when anybody talks about getting revenge, I'll just say, well, revenge doesn't belong to you. That's what the word says, right? Revenge don't belong to you. That belongs to the Lord. It belongs to Jesus Christ. Guess what? Judgment is the same way. Judgment doesn't belong to you. It belongs to Jesus Christ. So let him do the judging. You worry about your own self. It's like the Michael Jackson song. You start with the man in the mirror. Amen. You know what I mean? Not with the other people around you, but what we do, we get caught up in this lifting ourselves up by pushing other people down. Okay? I don't do that, and I don't do that, and I do do this, and I do do that. So that makes me have a little higher standing than this person here because they do do those things, or they don't do those things. We have to be very careful not to get caught up in that because that is what tears people apart. It tears congregations apart. It tears the body of Christ apart, okay? We, we understand, you know, we, Paul is talking about his day, you know? And he, as he goes down through here, he talks about the foods that you eat and, and um, regarding certain days above others, and, which was a big problem back in those days. But we have these same problems here today. Mm -hmm. That's why there are, that's why there are denominations, mm -hmm. because this these this group of people believes one thing, right. and then this group of people believes another thing, mm -hmm. and even though we all believe in Jesus Christ, right. we let we let things separate us. We let behavior separate us. Okay, when we're all the body of Christ, and none of us is supposed to judge another for anything that they do. Okay, as long as we all trust in what Jesus Christ has already done for us on the cross, First Corinthians chapter fifteen, Amen. you know, that He died for your sins according to the Scriptures, that He was buried and that He rose again. If we trust in that for our salvation, all the rest of it can be worked out. All right, if 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 you start there. And then you find somebody who teaches the truth of the word, you can figure the rest of it out by yourself. When I first got saved, I didn't know if, uh, if I was supposed to speak in tongues or not. Right? But once I was taught the word, and it says, all these gifts shall pass away when that which is perfect has come. Well, I see this as that which is perfect. So I make the decision that that's a dead gift. But there's a lot of people out there who don't believe that. You know? 80% of Christendom today thinks that it's, it's part of a Christian life. You know? I remember there are people out there today who 10 years ago or even 20 years ago would not teach that for anything who will now get up in pulpits and do it. I was, uh, I used to go to Rowan Hills Baptist Church uh, and started this, y all, y all, a lot of y'all heard this story before, started a Sunday school class, you know, and a lot of the people who were going to come to the Sunday school class had been teachers in the past, 
So I thought the good way, a good way to get these people invested in the class is to let them also teach. They'd all been teachers before. So the first guy that taught was a guy who had preached the word before. He had been a preacher. This guy was a Baptist, right? A Baptist preacher. He had been a Baptist preacher because that was a Baptist church. I didn't consider myself a Baptist at the time, but I was going to a Baptist church because it was the closest thing around here that I, uh, to what I believed. And I felt like they needed help because they were just starting up. And he started, the first, his very first lesson was in was the first chapter of Acts. And he started teaching about speaking in tongues. That it was a great idea. Everybody <laughs> should do it. And uh, that's what it says here in Acts 1. So we should go, we should go for it, right? So I didn't say anything at the time. I let him finish his lesson. Everybody there was nodding their heads, yes, you know going along with what he had to say. Um, and I went to the pastor, but I went to the pastor afterwards. I said, this is your church, it ain't mine. Okay? You, this is your decision, it's not mine. But you should know that this guy was teaching that we should all be speaking in tongues and that's, that, it's a, that it's something we should all be doing and uh, it really helps us and everything. And he said, well, I believe in speaking in tongues too. Oh, there was two women in my last church that spoke in tongues. I said, this is a Baptist church, right? And he said, yeah. I said, I've never heard of a Baptist church that spoke in tongues before. He says, oh, yeah. So now, you know, even, you know, when I was growing up as a kid, all Baptists believed the same thing. All Methodists believed the same thing. You know what I mean? All Church of Christ believed the same thing. But today, it's not even like that anymore. You know, now each Baptist church has its own thing that they teach. Mm -hmm. Some Baptist churches would never teach speaking in tongues. But Roland Hills thinks it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we have to be we have to be careful that we don't let these things divide us. Amen. Okay? Amen. Because it's the division. It's division that separates us. It's not, it's not really doctrine. It's not really whether we agree on one thing or another. It's the fact that we let these disagreements divide us. Yeah, amen. amen. You know? Amen. That's what causes the division. We allow it to divide us. Okay? We should be looking at each other with love. Yes. Embracing each other. Bring, yes. If you believe one thing and you know the person sitting beside you believes something else, take them to the Word. Don't sit and argue with them about it. <coughs> take them to the Word and say, look, this is what the Word says. You know what I mean? And if they believe the Word, they may not, they may not be convinced that day. If you continue to teach them the Word, and you are right about what the word says, then they'll come around eventually. You know? And if they don't, doesn't mean you should love them. You know what I mean? And it's not going to keep them out of here. As long as we all start at the same place. And that's trusting what Jesus has already done for us. Don't let these things separate. And this is what chapter 14 is all about. Right? It's about people letting themselves be separated, even though they're all Christians, right. they're allowing themselves to be separated because of arguments about doctrine. Yes. Now, doctrine is very important. Okay? It's very important to understand doctrine. But it's not everything. No. Love is important as well. Yes. Jesus says, <coughs> Jesus says, you know, you know you are, people will know you are mine by the way you love other people. Amen. Okay? Not by how well you know doctrine. Amen. But at the same time, we must keep in mind, we are transformed by the renewing of our mind. Okay? So we have to keep that in mind. All right? So doctrine is important. All right. Amen. Verse 5. One man esteemeth one day above another, another esteemeth every day of life. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. He that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord. 
And he that regardeth not the day to the Lord, he doth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks. And he that eateth not to the Lord, he eateth not, and giveth God thanks. What's important here is giving God thanks. Amen. Whether you, you know, um, there, are, there are still people today who, uh, well, Jewish people today still will not eat pork. Right? right? It's, it's, they feel like it's a, it defiles a guy if they eat pork. You know what I mean? Right. But I know Jerry eats pork. <laughs> doesn't make him any doesn't make him any less a man, does it? No. All right. I know um, in the in the Catholic Church they were only allowed to eat uh, fish. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. During a certain time or on Friday. Yeah. Fish is not meat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fish is not meat for some reason. They weren't allowed to eat meat on Friday, but they could eat fish. Right. 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 You know what I mean? Don't let these things separate you. No. You know what I mean? Same thing. I, I like fish. Invite me over for Friday night. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Invite me over for dinner Friday night because I love fish. Uh, but what's important is, is are you thanking God for what he's given you? Are you thanking God for what he's provided? You know, that's what's important here. Right? You know, there's a lot of people who believe, uh, you know, we have a we have a denomination out there today called Seventh-day Adventist, right? They believe that if you're not having your Sunday service, if you're not doing, stopping, <laughs> doing, doing your worship and all this stuff on Saturday, you are completely wrong. That you may not even be saved. If you're not worshiping on Saturday instead of Sunday, because because that's what the original Sabbath was was Saturday, right? Right. It's the last day of the week. Uh, but we believe we all get together on Sunday, not because Sunday is any better day than any other day. All right. We worship on Sunday because that was the day that Jesus Christ was resurrected. Correct. You know. That's why we all get together on Sunday. Right? That's why the first Christians worshipped on Sunday instead of Saturday because it was the day of the resurrection. Right? And we are worshipping a resurrected Lord. Amen. Right? Not a Lord that's been buried. Right? We cannot, but we can't let these things divide us. That's what's, what's important. Verse 7 says, For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. That's what's important, isn't it? If we all start at the same place, that's what's important. It goes on to say, For to this end, Christ both died and rose and revived that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. Okay? So he is our, he is our Lord. Alright? He is, he is the one who died that we might have life. He is the God of all. Alright? He is the God of those who believe that you have to worship on Saturday and he is the Lord of those who Believe you worship on Sunday. Right? And he's the one who believes, and he's the Lord of those who believe it doesn't matter when you do it. You know? He's the Lord of all. <laughs> Verse 10, but why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set at naught thy brother? Now, when this word naught means to reduce to nothing. For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. We will all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And guess what? J Jesus, when you stand before the judgment seat of Christ, he's not going to ask you if you ever spoke in tongues. He's going to ask you, did you love your brother? Did you allow yourself to be divided over little things that don't matter to a hill of beans? That's what he's going to ask you. Amen. You know what I mean? That's what you're going to be judged on. That's right. 
Right? Not whether you worshiped on Saturday or Sunday. Mm -hmm. But did you love people? Amen. Did you reveal me to others? That's what he wants to know. Verse 12. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Let us not therefore judge one another anymore, but judge this rather, that no man be put a stumbling block or, or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. What he's trying to tell us here is just because you have the liberty that God is giving you, all right, that sin is not a part of your problem anymore, all right, that you don't do things that would cause someone else to fail that would cause someone else to stop believing, that would cause someone else to stumble in any way. Okay? And if you demand that people worship on a certain day, then you can be a stumbling block to people who believe it up, believe otherwise, can't you? Right? We can't let this happen. And that's all Paul's talking about. Don't let these any little things get in the way. Amen. You know? We all have to account to God. We will be judged by God for not only for what we do, but also for what we know. Because in the time in this age of grace, God expects us to know the word. That's one of that's one of the things we will be judged on in this age of grace. You know, uh, they they may not have been judged on that. During, during the time of the law. They were judged on their behavior, basically, pretty much. You know, if they followed the law or not. Okay? And if they if they truly trusted in God and they followed the law, that's what they were judged on. They weren't judged on knowing the word. We're judged on how much of this we know. All right? Now, doesn't mean we have to know every, every jot and every tittle of the word. Okay? But it is part of it is part of the judgment that we go through. Did you make an effort to know the word? You know, it's it's it has more to do with your effort than it does what you know. How much effort did you put into knowing the word? You know, that's what God wants to know. Not that He doesn't already. Verse 14 tells us, I know and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself. But to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean to him, it is unclean. It's just like those people with uh, who believe that they must worship on Saturday. Right? If they worshiped on Sunday, that's unclean to them, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? Verse 15, but if thy brother be grieved with thy meat, now walk now walkest thou not charitably, destroy not him with thy meat, for whom Christ died. Let not then your good be evil spoken of. In other words, don't condemn people. Right? Don't condemn people over these things. You know? Don't condemn somebody because they only eat fish on Friday. Right. Or because they don't eat pork. Or because they worship on a certain day. Or because they do other things that maybe you don't agree with. That you believe the word teaches about against. You, you know what I mean? Because your doctrine is different. Don't judge these people. And because it says, let not, let not then your good be evil spoken of. That's the problem with most churches today, is they they judge people as soon as they walk in the door. You know, it's just like uh, the, there's a little Baptist church right down the road here, mm -hmm. and Robbie and I went there once. She felt judged the whole time she was there because she was the only woman there wearing pants. You know, don't let these things separate us. And, and now she wouldn't go back to that church for nothing. She thinks evil of those people. Yeah. 
because she felt judged because she was wearing pants. You know, uh, I've always been real, um, I guess the word, the best word to use is liberal when it comes to the way we dress around here, right? Doesn't matter to me how you dress, you know? Uh, but my mother was coming, when my mother first started coming to church here, we had a girl that came in and she was wearing sh real short jeans, shorts, and cowboy boots and a halter top. Okay? Now, some of you may think that's not appropriate for church. Mm -hmm. Believe me, my mother still brings that up to this day. Mm -hmm. She couldn't believe that girl came in here with shorts and boots on. You know what I mean? She still talks about it to this day. I never even thought about it until she mentioned it. You know what I mean? But she brings it up to me all the time. I can't believe it. You know? But, you know, my mother always taught us, you don't leave the house looking like a slob, and you don't leave the house looking like, you know, a, a, a whore or whatever. You know what I mean? Right? You're, not, you're not only representing yourself, but you're when, the way she looked at it, you're not only representing yourself, you're representing me. Right? You're representing your whole family. Every time you walk out the door, she used to give my brother such a hard time because he would go to the doctor and he would just be looking like a slob. I mean, and she would just, she would tear into him when he, you know, she would give him such a hard time over that. You know what I mean? But they didn't let it divide them too much. Um, then they'd get in an argument and they wouldn't talk for a week and then, you know. Uh, but that's just how my mother felt about it. You know what I mean? Um, but you you go see her today and she still likes to look nice but she'll have a spot or two on the front of her shirt where she ate and didn't see that she dripped anything she don't think anything about it now you know what I mean but when she was younger she wouldn't have never let anybody see her like that you know we have to be we just have to be careful not to let this stuff separate us uh, it tells us, um, I'm sorry, I, didn't, I never even got my notes out. Um, I'm take them a second. Sorry, guys. You've been doing fine with that one. Galatians, go to Galatians 5. Thank you very much, I appreciate that. Galatians 5, verse 13. Mm -hmm. Now, Galatians chapter 5, it speaks twice. Twice it speaks. It says it has the word liberty. Right? As grace believers, we believe and we have been called to liberty. Okay? In verse 13, it tells us, For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Not use, only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. If ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. See, he doesn't want us fighting over these little things. This I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. All right? For the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. Part of the lust of the flesh is judging others. Huh? Putting other people down because you don't think what they're doing is right. You know? There's a lot of... I, the same church that I went to, this little Baptist church over here that I was going to that uh, did the speaking in tongues thing, This uh, the preacher spent one whole sermon, he spent a whole Sunday preaching one day on the evils of smoking. Right? Now, I knew the fact that he spent a whole Sunday sermon preaching on smoking. I knew right then that this is probably not the place for me. Not because I smoked, but because he was so worried about that behavior. And he wanted it cut out of that church. Right? He 
didn't want anybody in that church smoking at all. Mm -hmm. Right? And for a whole number of reasons. Yeah. You know, I mean, he came up with a bunch of yeah. I'm not saying it's a good idea to smoke. I wish I didn't smoke. And I'm doing my best to quit. Right? Mm -hmm. For health reasons. Yeah. Because I want to be a good example to the young people. Mm -hmm. Right? But not because smoking somehow makes me less of a Christian or that God's going to judge me over whether, I, you know, whether I do that or not. Right. Because I have liberty, right? right? It's not the best thing in the world to do. It's not a good example to others. There's reasons why I should quit, and I'm trying. But don't spend a whole Sunday teaching me about smoking when what I want to know is what the Word says. And you know something? The word don't say a word about smoking. No, it not one word. No. The word cigarette is not in the Bible. <laughs> no. Okay? No. The word pot is not in the Bible. It does, it's not one of the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not get high. It's not in here. Okay? Now, there's lots of reasons why you shouldn't do it. All right? But you need to make up your own mind on that and not let some preacher tell you one way or another when it's not in here. I'm not trying to teach you what's not in here. I'm trying to teach you what's in here. Okay? The Bible doesn't say anything about gambling either. But we all know it's not a good idea most of the time, right? <laughs> Even though there's a lot of people these days making a lot of money at it. Doesn't mean it's a good idea, you know? But you have to decide that for yourself, and that's that's where I come in. I'll just teach you what the Word says. You, divide, you decide for yourself, okay? We can't let these things divide us. Corinthians chapter 10 verse 29 it says conscience I say not thine own but of the other for why is my liberty judged of another man's conscience for if I by grace be a partaker why am I evil spoken of for that for which I give thanks. Whether therefore ye eat or drink, or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Give none offense, neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God, even as I please all men in all things, not seeking mine own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. We are not to stand to to do things that will cause other people to stumble. All right? If if I'm in a room full of Christian people who believe that alcohol is the scourge of the earth, right? It's not a good idea for me. It's not something I should do to stand up here and declare to everybody that I drink beer every day. You know what I mean? That would be a good idea. You know why? Because then they're not going to listen to anything else I say. They're not going to believe a word I say about this. You understand what I'm saying? There's not anything wrong with drinking a beer. Okay? Paul even tells Timothy to drink a little wine to help his stomach out. It's for medicinal purposes. You know, it's funny. <laughs> when I was growing up, my grandmother best Christian woman you'd ever meet in your life. I swear to God, she was the best Christian woman you'd ever meet. And one day, 
I was in I was in the bathroom and I looked in the medicine cabinet for some bandages or something and I saw Dr. Tishner's. Well, I looked and I pulled the bottle of Dr. Tishner's out because I didn't know what it was for, right? And I was looking at the ingredients and everything and it had a little small percentage of alcohol in it, right? We used to give that woman, oh gosh, because I'm just a little smart mouth, I always have been. Uh -huh. We gave that woman such a hard time over Dr. Tishner's. You know what I mean? And her being a good little Christian woman, she didn't believe in drinking and she didn't believe in all that stuff. You know what I mean? She was, now it used to, at first it used to fly all over. You know what I mean? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> But we, we used to give her so much, such a hard time over Dr. Tishner's. You know what I mean? But we can do that with everything. If we let ourselves, you know, we can judge people for little things. We can let little things separate us. We have people in this church that all don't always make it on time. But if everybody here gave them a hard time about it, they were, and everybody's looking at certain people, I don't know what this is about. We can't let that separate us. You know what I mean? We can't. We can't go up to these people and go, you need a bell. No. You know what I mean? Teach them what the word says and let them make up their own mind. You know what I mean? We have liberty. Okay? Quit judging each other on these little stupid things. And that's all Paul is trying to tell us here in chapter 4. Quit judging each other on these <laughs> stupid little dis disputes and let your and let your love <clears throat> overshadow the dispute. Alright? Let your love overshadow it. You know, we I went to uh, we had a guy come here and I don't remember his name right now. You may remember his name, Andrea, the little uh, little guy that came in that Parnian. Huh? Stan Parnian. Yeah, you yeah, Parnian. He came, uh, Andrea saw him at the library one day and invited him to our church because he was wearing a shirt that said, rightly dividing the word, right? And so she invited him to church. He came to church. He listened to the message. And after the message, I sat down with him. And anybody else that was in here in distance heard about a two-hour sermon from him, right? About all kinds of things. I don't even remember what it was about now. Uh, and then he decided he was going to do a Bible study because he was between churches and he saw himself as a teacher and he wanted to teach and so he rented a room in the back of the library and invited a bunch of people that he knew to the Bible study. Well, I went to the Bible study. I wanted to, he went, he came to my church. I thought it was only right that I went to his, right? So we get into the Bible study and it's just me and a few other people and the stuff he was teaching I was like, I was almost appalled. How can somebody who believes in right division believe what he's got, what he's saying? You know what I mean? Um, I found out his what he thought was right division is that he is right. So the way he divides the word is right, and everybody else is wrong. That's what I, that's, that's what I find out. Now. As a, as a teacher of the word and uh, uh, a person who embraces grace, right, and embraces dispensationalism and embraces right division, right, some people would say you should have stood up in that Bible study and not let him teach that, right, not let him teach that to these people, but that's not my place, okay? Now, if they had asked me, I told them. <laughs> but trust me, stand on ask. Stand tails. You know what I mean? Um, he's like he's like Paul in that you know Paul is always defending the fact that he is an apostle. Uh, that you know he's all everything that he's writing here was revealed to him by God. He may be you know he's stands kind of the same way. I'm prophet of God. God told me this himself. You know, he talked directly toward me. You know, um, I didn't stand up and say, 
Stan, you're completely wrong about all this, and you shouldn't be teaching these people that. I didn't say a word. I sat through the Bible study. I invited him back to church. I've talked to him a little bit, you know what I mean? But there's not really any talking to Stan. You know what I mean? Stan believes what he believes. He believes it's been revealed to him by God. He hasn't been revealed to everybody else, but it's just been revealed to him. You know what I mean? And um, and but but Stan and I are still really good friends. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't I don't dislike Stan mm -hmm. because he's mixing law and grace, or because he's come up with these things that off the top of his head that <laughs> seem to make sense when he reads particular scriptures. You know, we are, Stan and I are very good friends. You know, we still hug each other and love each other every time we see each other. You know what I mean? We don't let these things, and he knows that, he knows what I teach because he said they're one of my sermons and I was very, and it was a grace sermon. You know, I made sure of that. Okay. He doesn't judge me. I don't judge him. Even though he's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way we all should do it. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Stan and I love each other. We're very good friends. Okay? Just because somebody doesn't believe the way that you do, right. doesn't mean you shouldn't love them. Right? right? Doesn't mean you shouldn't be friends with them. Right. You know? Right. Because you're, you're going to... What's the, what's the old expression? You capture a lot more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Missionaries have been doing this for years. <laughs> bees, is it bees? Yes, it's bees, not flies. I try it with flies, it works with them too. <laughs> Most insects. <laughs> uh, I don't remember what I was going to say now. <laughs> going to close this out and now y'all can just hold me apart <laughs> because of the bees. <laughs> I have this thing about bees, but I'm not going to judge you over the bees. But you got to think about flies. Be, we have to be careful and especially and, and especially in the uh, right division movement that we're in because it can become Sometimes, like Pharisee, Pharisee, and what I'm trying to say is the Pharisees, they went by the letter of the law, mm -hmm. right? If you weren't keeping the letter of the law, every jot, every tittle, every word, if you weren't perfect in every one of those things, you were judged. <coughs> you were you were considered less than. Mm -hmm. All right. And in the right division movement today, there is a, <clears throat> let me see what the word I should use. I'm not saying that it's done that way, but I'm saying it could easily go that way. All right? When at the very first conference that I went to, the first person I talked to, you know what he told me? He said, there's a certain group of people that believe this, in this movement, and there's a certain people that believe this. He says, we believe this. So, because you're in this conference, you need to be believing this. Okay? And, and I'm like, okay, this is the first. <laughs> all right, all right. And then I, I, I go to I, I go to a Bible study here in here in Nashville. And the first thing I'm told when I go in there is that. People down south believe this. People up north, they believe this. You know what I mean? And then, and then proceeded to do the next five Bible studies that I went to to teach me why I should believe this instead of what they believe up north. Okay? Then I go to another conference later on, and I'm sitting out by the pool with a bunch of other pastors talking about 
And there's, and one of them's like, now, don't get caught up in all this stuff that the guys down south are teaching. You know what I mean? Don't let that distract you. From... So, you see, even in the, even in, in every movement, you know, we, we believe in grace and we believe that we're right, right? We believe that we're teaching the true word of God. But these people, but some people will still let little things like this, little jots and little tittles, and little, what this word means to some person, what this word means to somebody else. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Some people believe ordinances mean one thing. Some people believe ordinances mean something else. Right. You know what I mean? Because they can't agree on what the word ordinance stands for. Mm -hmm. They've let it divide them. There's, just, there's no reason why there should be a division in the northern camp and in the southern camp. Correct. No reason at all. Let's all sit down and figure out the word, what the word ordinances means and go from there. Amen. You know, instead of saying, they don't agree with me and I don't agree with them. Instead of starting there, you know what I mean? Let's just teach each other Let's teach what the word says and and we make up our own minds. Alright? Because we're the ones that have to stand before Jesus Christ. Okay? We're the ones that have to stand before Jesus Christ. I'm not going to have to stand there for Andrea. Andrea's got to do that herself. So I'm going to continue to do this. I'm going to teach you the word. You make up your own mind. If you have any questions, that's what I'm here for. All right? That's also what the other elders are here for. We will teach you what the word says. Okay? But let's let's not let the word like it has with all these. You know, there are so many people today who don't go to church because they don't know which church to go to because they don't know who's teaching the truth. You know? And there's so many people who just stay away from it. For that very reason. Because we've allowed ourselves to be divided. Mm -hmm. And to separate ourselves into little cliques mm -hmm. that we call denominations. Correct. I'm not saying we should all teach the same thing. If I don't believe what the guy down the street teaches, I don't believe what Stan teaches, and I'm not going to teach that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But you should be able to go to, to different churches in the area that you live in. And see who, and and make up your own mind who's teaching the truth or not. Not who's teaching what you believe, mm -hmm. but who's teaching the truth. Right. Who opens up the Bible and reads from the Bible and says, "This is what the Word says." Let that make up your mind, not what, not what your ancestors believed in. You, you know what I mean? Not what somebody taught you when you was a little kid. Right? Don't make your decision on who you hang out with and who you worship with and what church you go to based on something you were taught in Sunday school when you were five years old. Or something that your grandmother believed in. <coughs> okay? My, my grandmother had no idea about dispensationalism or right division. But I guarantee you, when I get to heaven, she's going to be there standing at the gate waiting for me. Amen. All right? She didn't speak in tongues. She believed that you need to be baptized, that you should be baptized if, once you got saved. All right? I disagree with both of those things. But I know she'll be standing there waiting for me. Amen. All right? And we should all look at it that way. That's all Paul's trying to get across here. And that's my message today.